Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Odette Hines and I'll be your moderator for the webinar entitled Introduction to Intel RealSense LiDAR Camera 5 L515. Please note that this webinar is the first in a series of three webinars. The next webinar entitled Digitizing Logistics Using Depth Sensing Technologies will be presented by Chris Bernard from Intel RealSense on August 5th. The final webinar in the series will be held in September. The registration link for next week's webinar will be in the chat section of your webinar panel. Please don't forget to register. Your presenter today will be Ferdinand Reitz. Ferdinand spent three years at Intel in the Strategic Business Development Division in the former New Technology Group, which is now the Emerging Gro Growth Incubator Group. He had a focus on drones. In December 2019, Ferdinand joined Framos as a product manager for the Intel and all 3D products. Before we start today, I want to provide you with a few housekeeping rules. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have questions during the webinar, please type them in the question section in your GoToWebinar control panel, and I will ensure that they're answered at the end of the webinar. If we do not get to your questions today, we'll send the answers to you a few days after the webinar. The on-demand version of the webinar will be available within the next few days. We will ensure that that is sent to you as well. If you require an additional conversation or a demo, please ensure that you put the request in the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel, and I will ensure that they're directed to the presenter at the end of the webinar. Now, without further ado, I'd like to pass this over to Ferdinand. Welcome as well from my side to the L515 LiDAR introduction webinar. My name is Ferdinand Reitzer. I'm the product manager for Intel and 3D products at Framos. I will be sharing my screen shortly. There we go. So today's webinar will be focused on the Intel RealSense L515 LiDAR camera. But before we go into detail, let's have a high level look at why and where 3D cameras are used and what technologies are offered by RealSense. We'll also demo the L515 and compare it to the D435 and close the webinar with the roadmap and some general information. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to have a deep dive into the applications and some additional information, make sure you sign up for the Intel webinar digitizing logistics and using depth text sensing technology next week. So 3D vision and imaging is becoming widely adopted in different industries and markets. And in our experience, this is driven by increases in processing power and cost reductions of the technologies used. The latter one part, play, uh, the, the integration in consumer products plays an important role as well. So this is, these are the drivers that we see. But what does 3D provide that 2D vision can't? If we look at the image on the far left, in the 2D image, it is very hard to recognize what exactly is shown. Your brain may be able to assess the image and you may be able to recognize that it's shapes of humans as cut cutouts that are stacked behind each other. But with a 2D camera, this is very hard or can't even be recognized. It's easy to create optical illusions. The second image shows the same scene through a 3D camera, now it is very easy to recognize the shapes and see how they are stacked behind each other. By adding the distance information to each pixel of the camera sensor, 3D cameras allow one to recognize shapes and sizes and thus deliver a greater performance understanding the context of a scene. Based on Intel's and our own experience, understanding shapes and sizes and distances improve or enable three main use cases. First one being object measurement, then object detection and object rec recognition. Object measurement, for example, is application for logistics and warehouse management, for example, to calculate freight costs based on the size and volume, and maybe even the, the estimated weight of a package. Can also be used in smart agriculture, for example, to do growth monitoring and check on the health of plants. Object detection, on the other hand, is important to navigate in an environment. This may be relevant for AGVs, automatic guided vehicles, vehicles, drones, or harvesters in smart agriculture. 
So it's important for those devices to understand the environment, detect potential obstacles to prevent collisions and get from point A to point B. Object recognition provides the most context to a scene, can be used in robotics for bin picking and pick and place applications when you don't just want to know if there's something in the bin, but also to really understand where is it located and how you can grip it with an industrial robotic uh, um, system. Can also be interesting for ground management uh, in retail settings. Right now, very common is uh, to check social dist distancing, recognize are there people in the field of view, do they keep their distance, or to monitor their behavior in certain environments. Now, there are different technologies available, and it is important that there is no all-in-one solution, meaning deaf technology solution, that fits all applications. Every technology has drawbacks and benefits, making it important to understand the technologies that are available, your application's requirements in regards to robustness, accuracy, and the full user scenario and light conditions to choose the best technology. Intel RealSense offers several DEV technologies to choose from. Each technology um, and product family fits a different usage scenario. So we can have a look at those and see how they might be benefit your application. So we will have a look at coded light, stereo, and the latest in the family, the LiDAR L500 series. Coded light and stereo are based on triangulation. So by knowing the baseline between projector or the image sensors, the focal length and the spatial pattern of the, uh, that is projected by the projector, the distance of a particular object can be calculated on a pixel by pixel basis. Coded light has a heterogeneous laser projector that projects a known pattern with high intensity on, a, on an object. It is a one camera solution. So you have one camera sensor and the projector. Common patterns are circles or stripes. As you can see, stripes are used in the, in the SR300 family for an Intel RealSense. Based on the deformation of those patterns on the object, the distance can be reconstructed. For RealSense cameras, uh, this is done in, on the ASIC. So no load is actually passed on to the host system to calculate the depth image. And this is true for all the Intel cameras and modules. The benefits of coded light cameras are the high accuracy and the low cost. However, to ensure eye safety, the laser projector has a very low power, making it mainly suitable for uh, uh, low working distances from zero to up to 1.5 meters. It is also susceptible to interferences in a multi-camera setup. And, uh, uh, yeah, susceptible to a multi-camera uh, interference. Sorry for that. It is also susceptible to interferences in a multi-camera setup, and based on the the range limitations and the high accuracy, common applications are facial authentication. Now, stereo cameras, the second uh, shown in the middle of the the slide, are the most robust technology at, at the moment. It is based on two camera sensors that are set up to mimic human 3D vision. The 3D image is reconstructed using stereo matching. So the system searches for features that can be matched in both images. With the known factors of the camera, uh, as mentioned before, baseline between the two images, focal length and more, the distance can then be calculated. Stereo cameras have challenges, especially in scenes with little texture. For example, if you are indoors and you look at a white wall or a single colored wall, there's just not enough texture to find features in both images and then calculate the depth. To solve this, uh, an, an IR laser projector is often added to project a pattern to add texture. Then this, uh, it's, it's called an active stereo camera. Without the projector, we talk about passive systems. Stereo cameras can also achieve a very high accuracy and can be very cost effective and robust, making it suitable for a wide range of application and environments. 
Now, going over to the LiDAR. LiDAR is a time of flight technology. It is based on the time between when a laser pulse is emitted and the reflection of it, uh, of, of the object of the light when it is received. The differences in return times and wavelength is then used to create the depth map. In the past, LiDAR has been quite expensive. Uh, main reason for that is, is it, they have also been very large because they had very uh, huge mechanical parts or let's say bigger mechanical parts and that limited the areas of use. So the typical LiDAR used a spinning mirror to capture a 2D area and then the whole LiDAR has had to be rotated or moved to capture a 3D scene. With new microelectromechanical systems, the working principle, size, and cost have been reduced lately. Such systems uh, you usually refer to as solid state LIDARs, and the L515 is such a device. LIDAR provides highest precision of all the systems and technologies presented today, and uh, they also present the highest cost compared to the previous technologies. For, to, to ensure human eye safety, also with LiDAR systems, the laser projector is generally limited in power, resulting in range limitations and also in, in limitations in outdoor usage. We'll just cover, cover that a little bit later as well. So now we have the basic technologies that are available as RealSense or within RealSense cameras and modules. Let's have a closer look at the L515 camera. The L515 was launched earlier this year. It is, as said before, a solid state LiDAR. It has a maximum range of nine meters and working minimum working distance starting from 25 centimeters approximately. Instead of having a rotating mirror, the L515 uses a, a, a MEMS system with a small mirror and the laser again is fixed. We'll look into the working principle in the next slide. 23 million pixels per second are processed by the L515. So to capture a, a full image, it takes less than 100 nanoseconds down to eight to 10 nanoseconds. So you can see the L515 can deliver a very sharp image without practically any motion blur making it very suitable for applications where you have high move objects moving at a high speed. It is, has a very small factor as all the real sense cameras available and only weighs 100 grams. It looks like a small ice hockey puck and is actually uh, smaller than a tennis ball in diameter with only 60 being one, 61 millimeters. On the bottom right, you can see the, the principal setup and, and, and components of the L515, starting with the body, the ASIC board, uh, has it having a USB-C connector and an auxiliary hardware connector for synchronization and triggering. There is a module with the IR emitter and receiver. It has an IMU, so you can also get data from, from the movement of, of the LiDAR itself and a full HD RGB camera. To give some more detail on the working principle, we have two illustrations from Intel to, to show. The, the mirror of the MEM system oscillates in y-axis and itself is moved along the x-axis creating this specific pattern that you can see. At each pixel, the ASIC measures the time of flight and assigns a distance. This can be seen in this slide. So each red dot represents a pixel where the time of flight is measured and the respective depth, calculated depth is assigned to. So within a very few nanoseconds, you can retrieve a full image. With the power consumption below 3.5 watts, the laser projector is, is human eye safe and that limits the range and the outdoor usability to some extent. Uh, because, and then this is valid for most of the time of flight cameras available. To be able to operate outdoors, you would need a much higher 
uh, power of the laser or a different wavelength. So as soon as you have daylight, there is a chance of uh, interference and uh, affecting the depth quality. Now that we have covered the device, we'll also look at it uh, after this slide in a live demo where we compare it to the D435. Uh, uh, let's have a brief look at the software development kit. The RealSense viewer is also something that we're going to show in the live demo. The RealSense SDK 2.0 is a cross-platform library supporting all RealSense cameras and modules. It greatly simplifies the data integration from any RealSense device into a custom application. And to answer a common question right away, cross-platform means that it is CPU agnostic. It supports a wide variety of operating systems so from Windows, Linux, macOS, and Android, and different, many different programming languages so users can program in what they are used to. Beyond that, there is a full ecosystem with supported wrappers from ROS, MATLAB, to Unreal Engine, and more, as well as a third-party software to kickstart any, any of your developments. One example third-party software that we want to highlight here is Cubemos, a framework spin-off company. Cubemos provides a skeleton tracking SDK that offers a very fast and simple way to go from a simple image to human pose estimation. Each skeleton can have up to 18 joints and is assigned a unique ID. Based on that, it is easy to track the skeleton over time in 2D as well as 3D. And using 3D data, it is also possible to detect fraud, for example, uh, detect if there's a cutout board presented in front of the camera, or is it an actual 3D person, a human that is positioned in front of it. Moving over to the live demo, we'll have a look at the Intel RealSense viewer and go through some of the settings there. And please note that Intel provides many white papers and guides on how to set up a particular device for a best performance or a specific application. You'll find that on the Intel Wilson's website, or if you have questions, uh, send them over to us and we can help and provide uh, the, the links or information directly. What you can see now is sorry is the real sense viewer that the viewer allows you to enable various image streams based on the connected devices and control the settings of the devices in the left panel you can see that the d435 and the l515 have been detected already automatically when i started the real sense viewer they're both connected via usb c 3.2 version cables. In the same panel, I can now switch on the image streams of the of the modules, for example, the stereo module of the D435 or the RGB camera. Within the respective modules, I can also change additional settings like the resolution, frame rate, or turn on additional streams. Or the D435, we have the left and right imaging images, uh, infrared streams that we can turn on that would be shown if I switch it on. We can also switch between different presets that may already fit your application. I'll choose for now the high density preset, as I discovered this works best for the scenario that I set up uh, here. For the L515, you have a different set of streams that you can turn on. Death, the same as for the D435, displays the death map as computed by the device. Then you have an infrared stream that represents the intensity of the reflected laser light of the objects that are in the scene. And the last one, the confidence, is the confidence stream that shows the relative confidence level for each computed depth value. Brighter pixels represent high confidence, darker pixels, low confidence in the calculated depth. Some of the settings that you see have to be changed before you turn on the stream. For example, resolution and frame rate, which of the streams you want to have, and the format. 
So let's switch on the D435. In the right, in the main window, now you can see the 2D death map that is created from the scene from the D435 camera. And it's color coded, the color coding and uh, the mapping of the colors can be changed in the setting as well. And hovering over a certain area on the bottom left, you can also see the calculated distance as a readout. I can also switch over to the 3D view and rotate the scene to get a better glance. And if I activate the RGB camera, we can get it as a texturized point cloud. So before we go into specifics of the D4 L4 F L515, let me switch on the death stream of the L515 as well, so we can compare them briefly. You can already see if you look at the radiator in the depth stream of the D435, you have areas between the individual pipes where no depth is calculated. And it is sometimes also pretty hard to distinguish the individual pipes. Looking at the same area in the L515 stream, it is much more crisp. The edges are much more sharper, showing the higher accuracy of the L515. And in specific areas, you can actually look between the pipes and see the back of the wall. Another area that is quite interesting is when we look at the plant on the top left or any of the two plants that are located there, the individual uh, um, items of the plant, sorry for that, <laughs> are much more crisp in the L5.5 image. And you can also see that the D435 with the current settings has a much better short distance performance, but we can address that by changing in the L5.5 setting to a short range as a preset. And we immediately see that this is also possible. Looking at the cup with the pens and the scissor, again, we see the, the very crisp and sharp image of the L5.5 compared to the D435. As a last comparison test, I will open the blind of the window and you can immediately see how daylight can affect the quality of the depth image. While in D435, only the window itself is removed. Most of the other objects, they uh, uh, can, the depth can be calculated, but on the L5.5, immediately the black cups of the plants uh, lose detail. If I close the blinds again, you will see that the L5.5 can cover them correctly as well. And uh, another test is the speaker that is to my right. While the, the, the stereo camera has a, a very good view on the side, the L5.5 has a challenge with the black side of the of the speaker probably because the black matte material is absorbing a lot of the lighter uh, of the light now i will turn off the d435 Another, another difference between the two cameras is in how the system is controlled. In the L5.5, you have two main settings, the laser power and the receiver gain. The higher the laser power, the longer the camera range will be. The longer range comes, however, at the expense of short range detection, meaning that if the laser power is too high, close objects may uh, appear too bright and the, the depth measurement will or can may not be possible. The receiver gain, so higher receiver gain is useful in situations where 
the signal coming back, the, so the reflected light coming back from an object is too low. This may be for, well, for distant objects, dark objects, for objects that are from material with low reflectivity. A higher receiver gain can, can solve that, but that also means that the noise is being amplified. This could include interfering light from, from other sources, uh, such as daylight. So it is, it is important to carefully select um, the receiver gain. There's always a trade-off for both settings between long-range performance and short-range performance and, and other factors. Maybe one more thing that is related to the D435. So let me turn that one on again. If I disable the laser projector of the D435, you will immediately notice how the performance of this covering the white wall above the speaker and, the, and next to the plants will be more difficult for the camera. So only in the area where I have an image on the wall, the, the depth is calculated with uh, very consistently. Turning back on back the, the laser back on again, we see that the distance can be calculated very precisely. All right, going back to the slides. This table I will only go over very briefly. It shows some of the main cameras of the different families that Interilsense offers, together with use cases and, and most, the most important characteristics. It can help you to pre-select a suited camera for an application. If you have any questions there, feel free to ask later in the webinar or reach out to our sales and, and field application engineering team. Having a look at the high-level roadmap from Intel, we can see the available products for 2020 and an outlook on 2021 with new unannounced products. The latest member in the Wilson's family is the recently announced D455 camera offering global shutter depth and RGB sensors with a very wide field of view and the highest accuracy yet for a RealSense stereo camera. So check out that camera and if you have any questions on that, also feel free to reach out. Please watch for any updates and new announcements from Intel regarding to, to new products and technologies. To close the presentation, as Premos, we are very happy to have Intel as a partner and provide the full reasons portfolio to our customers from co components like the D4 vision processors and the boards and modules to the actual cameras and added value products and services such like flex interposer cables. Uh, if you are an OEM manufacturer and you want to uh, increase the distance, for example, between the depth module and the D4 vision card. We can also offer custom developments. And beyond that, we offer an industrialized version of the D415 and D435 camera called the D400E series. The industrialized cameras offer an IP66 housing, IP67 is uh, available on demand. We offer a gigabit Ethernet M12 interface with threaded connectors and a dedicated power supply and GPIO via an additional M8 interface. Gigabit Ethernet offers uh, the, the benefit of being able to use network structures for multi-camera setups and cable lengths of up to 100 meters. The cameras are also available as modules on a project basis without the housing and other mechanical parts. So they also allow easy integration in tight spaces. So with our sales team and FAE team, Framos can consult and support you to find the best suited technology for any of your applications. Thank you. I will now hand back over to Edette for the questionnaire session. Well, thank you so much for an informative presentation, Ferdinand, and thank you for all who've stayed on with us throughout the duration of this webinar. If you haven't submitted your questions yet, please do so now, and I'll try to get to them. Um, without further ado, I will go into our first question. Um, the first one that I have, we have 
quite a list today. The first question that I have is, as a TOF camera, does the L515 support a multi-camera setup? Yes, that is actually possible. For example, if you ensure that, if, let's say we, we talk about two cameras, if you ensure that um, the two cameras projectors are not visible from each other's receptors, or by using hardware synchronization, making sure that the individual projectors do not emit at the same time. To learn more about the setup, please reach out to us directly and we can provide more uh, information. Okay, perfect. Um, question number two is, can you comment on the L515 with the ethernet interface? Um, and the same for the D455? So for the L515, uh, Intel has not yet announced a module version. So we are looking into that and uh, working and, and checking how the regular L5.5 may be able to be industrialized, but it is uh, still an open question. So we will have to wait until the evaluation is done. And for the D455, it's the same. So far, no module has been announced, but we are very interested in industrializing uh, the, the D455 as well as the L5.5. Okay. Um, another question here is, as it is based on laser, how stable is the reconstruction to temperature variation? That one is a question that we would need to take with us and answer uh, in the follow-up to the webinar. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, we can relay it back to um, Intel. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> okay. Um, um, another one that's coming in too, um, is the L515 suitable for dynamic scenes? Is it is there a motion blur? It's based on the, on the very short time it takes uh, the, the, the system to create one image, it is almost not susceptible to any motion blur. So you will get very crisp images. However, due to how the image is captured on, on there might be some minor uh, uh, rolling shutter effects visible, but there's no motion blur, basically. Okay. Um, another one that I have is the L515 has difficulty obtaining depth data from low reflectance, i.e. black targets, even at one meter. How can the L515 be configured to obtain depth data from low reflective, reflectance targets at one meter and beyond? Would that be something you can take on or do we need to push this to the uh, the Intel team? Well, I can, I think with the, the detail answer is something for the follow-up. Uh, in principle, it depends on what kind of material uh, the, 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 the object is of. If uh, there is, there can be enough reflectance from, from the material, then the system might be able to be tuned to, to discover that. If uh, the material just absorbs the, the light, then it will be very hard with the current, uh, based, based on the current camera. Okay. Okay. That's good. And we'll follow up with Intel to provide more information as we go along. Yes. Um, it uh, Here's another one that I find to be really interesting too. It was stated a couple of times that the L515 is for indoor use only. Can you briefly explain that again? Yes, so the, the L515 uses a low power laser projector in the 860 nanometer range. And the uh, sunlight is the most common light source that, that also contains near infrared light at the same wavelength of 860 um, nanometer. So when too much sunlight is, is present in the scene, the, the camera has to work very hard and it's very hard for the camera to distinguish between the emitted, uh, so the reflected the reflected uh, light pulse from the originally emitted light from the camera and the emit light. So the more light uh, is available in the same wavelength, the harder it is for the camera and thus the quality of the depth map uh, will suffer. Okay. All right, another one that's just popped in again. Is it possible to enhance the L515 with lenses? That is a, a, a very good question. Um, also something that we would have to verify with Intel based on the camera itself. Uh, um, I think there are physical limitations, uh, so we'll, we'll follow up on that question. Okay, all right, fair. <laughs> um, another one that's popped in again, will there be a L500 family member that works outdoors? 
we cannot comment on that at the moment. So far, Intel has not announced anything in that regard. So please follow the latest announcements from Intel um, on upcoming technologies and products. We can okay. also keep in touch and, and provide the information as soon as it's available. Perfect, perfect. And then I'll take a last one before we end here. Um, is it possible to filter out the 890 nm sunlight similar to the camera filters? That may, may be uh, an option. Um, also a question that I would like to uh, follow up with Intel together. Okay, perfect. All right, um, so without um, any further ado, I'll just uh, want to reiterate that um, thank you for your questions to start off with, first of all, and uh, we'll get back to you with the answers in a few days. Um, just want to let you know, we'll be sending out the slide deck, the question and answers that we've just had here, as well as other questions that we, we will get and might have, and we'll send that out to you in a few days. Please remember to register for part two of this webinar series for next week's webinar. It is in your chat section, so go ahead and click on that and register. And then we have a final one to wrap up the L515 um, product line in September, so stay tuned for your personal invite. Um, another note, please follow Framos and Intel RealSense on LinkedIn and Twitter for company information, product launches, webinars, and virtual events. Thank you so much again, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.